started out with slaves singing in the fields using simple rhythm and improvisation. When slaves were freed, many moved to larger cities and brought their unique style of music with them. In big cities like New Orleans and Chicago, the music evolved to have more complex melodies and rhythms. The Golden Age took place, a time where jazz grew and became more complex. It was here that orchestras took the style of music and formed big band jazz orchestras. Big bands became the jazz that we know of today. The American society in the 1920s was the perfect push towards jazz evolving. Between the 16th and the 19th century, slaves were taken from West Africa to America in a movement known as the slave trade. This passage was not an easy passage for many of the Africans. When the Africans got to America, they were sold to plantation owners to work on American plantations. Work was often very hard and slaves were treated brutally. In this situation of cruelty and cultural dislocation, slaves had to find ways to cope. One of the most effective coping mechanisms was music. Jazz is known greatly for its use of improvisation and the feelings incorporated within the music. As slaves worked in the fields, often they expressed their emotions within the music they sang. Improvisation came naturally due to the fact that slaves did not have notated music. Not only was improvisation used, but also a strong beat was often incorporated. A beat could help slaves keep time with their work and keep them on track. But slaves that were taken from West Africa in the slave trade were attracted to Christianity, especially the stories that it brought of freedom and going to heaven. These often became symbols within their own music. Later, these types of music became known as spirituals. Swing low. My sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home Swing low My sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home After America went through the Civil War, the Thirteenth Amendment was ratified, giving slaves freedom. As Africans moved to the cities, they brought their culture and music with them. Here, the traditional music of their ancestors evolved and grew in the desolate concrete jungle to become the jazz we all know today. It contained elements of soul, spirituals, traditional African music, and even Caucasian influence. The Roaring Twenties is known greatly for the Jazz Age, also known as the Golden Age of Jazz. Jazz could be heard from the radio to speakeasies, secret bars, where music and alcohol were served up during Prohibition. During this time, jazz music exploded. As jazz became more and more popular, so did its creators, such as Duke Ellington, Fletcher Henderson, Art Tatum, Louis Armstrong, and many, many more. Jazz was first known for its simplicity, but as it evolved in the 1920s, it changed into a complex music arrangement that not everyone could play. Later, with the lack of alcohol during Prohibition, speakeasies developed. This is where many of the jazz mus musicians played and got their start. Some of the most famous known artists were from places like Harlem, New York. Typical instruments involved in the jazz music section came from the Brass and Reed family. In the time of the 1920s, the these were mostly trombones and clarinets. Today, you would see the clarinet switched out for the saxophone. These helped provide the musky sound that many listeners enjoyed. In the late 1920s, the white population would listen to jazz in places like the Cotton Club in New York, where jazz was the main attraction for the establishment. Even though jazz was accepted and used greatly in the middle class white population, it formed a mix of African American traditions and ideals with the white middle class society.
In the late 19th century and early 20th century, African-American musicians congregated in Storyville, New Orleans. This was a red light district where boarding was extremely cheap due to the fact that many prostitutes were in the area. This was a place where many of the musicians shared their music. New Orleans was seen as the home of many musicians, even if very little time was spent there. Before the 1920s, jazz musicians from New Orleans had already spent years spreading their New Orleans sound throughout the nations. Despite attempting to spread the New Orleans sound, much of the jazz music remained in New Orleans. Artists such as King Oliver, Louis Armstrong, and Kid Ory created well-known reputations due to their original jazz music. Between 1917 and 1923, racism, prejudice, and violence resurfaced against the African Americans and Creole population in New Orleans. During this period of time, many musicians were forced to leave their musical hometown of New Orleans. Some of these people included King Oliver, Edward Ory, and Louis Armstrong. This migration of well-known musicians spread much of the jazz music throughout the United States. Musicians fled to Chicago, New York, and Kansas City. Chicago was one of the most popular destinations because it was one of the biggest hubs that was closest to New Orleans. This could be traveled to by river. Chicago also was dominated by gangsters, their cabaret, and dance clubs. As a decade of rebellion, the Roaring Twenties was made for jazz. The young and the hip were delighted in anything that was new or exciting. The new and exciting rhythms and harmonies were ultimately the irresistible force behind society's acceptance of jazz. There were two distinct periods in the history of popular bands. Beginning in the mid-1920s, big bands, then consisting of 10 to 25 pieces, came to dominate popular music. At first, bands often played jazz involving little improvisation and had fewer instruments being played. Towards the end of the 1920s, a new form of big band emerged, which was more authentically jazz. In that, more time was given to improvised soloing. Jazz musicians often play solos that are made up as they go along, or are reinterpreted from a given melody. When more than one musician plays, the rhythms become very complex as such. There is a lot of variety in jazz. One of the first band leaders to achieve national fame was Fletcher Henderson, who formed a band in the early 1920s. Originally, the band was a dance band playing waltzes and foxtrots. Over the course of a few years, jazz rhythms became more and more prominent in the band's music. By then, the band had taken over Roseland Ballroom and featured Louis Armstrong on the trumpet. From this point on, it had become a jazz band. As the jazz dance bands became more and more popular, Jazz bands became bigger. In size, bands were also still smaller, but economic pressure had caused the huge growth of jazz bands to form all over America, and they became known as big bands. The economy provided the masses of people who loved to dance and who also appreciated the fact that the orchestra was there to provide the music. Society in the 1920s was a key role in the way jazz evolved. Often, people sought fun, leisure, and pleasure. The beat was strong and syncopated and tied right into the way in which the roaring... Jazz music celebrates life, human life, the range of it, the absurdity of it, the ignorance of it, the greatness of it, the intelligence of it, the sexuality of it, the profundity of it, and it deals with it. In all of its... it deals with it. You know, it's the ultimate in, in rugged individualism. It's going out there on that stage and saying, it doesn't matter how anybody else did it, this is the way I'm going to do it. When you see a jazz musician playing, you're looking at a pioneer, you're looking at an explorer, you're looking at an experimenter, you're looking at a scientist, you're looking at all those things because it's the creative process incarnate. Jazz started with a simple rhythm and was first started from American slaves singing in the fields. As slaves were freed, they brought their style of music with them to their new hometown, such as New Orleans. Jazz musicians often referred to New Orleans as their home, and when racism and prejudice affected black jazz musicians, they moved to other places throughout the country, such as Chicago and New York. Here, they brought a lot of the music, the new music of jazz, with them. Society had greatly evolved the jazz music to become a more complex rhythm and formed big bands, which is the style of jazz we know of today.